Good afternoon to you, Jason here, Birchfield Family Farm, Oxford, Ohio. We do grass-fed Red Devon cattle, St. Croix sheep and chickens uh, in a rotational grazing system here that's under uh, five acres. Got a good word for you today. Uh, this comes from Psalm 66. Shout with joy to God all the earth. Sing the glory of his name, make his praise glorious. Say to God how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. Okay, I am super excited to share some more data with you today on our Johnson Sioux extract experiment we've been doing in the garden uh, with an overwintering mix of, of cover crops. We're gonna, we're gonna get into that. Uh, I wanna show you where we're at with animals here first. Uh, we'll head out in the, the paddocks here and take a look, and then uh, I can promise you you're going to want to hang around for this data on Johnson Sioux. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty amazing stuff. Okay, out here in the paddocks, we have just finished up our seventh rotation. So seventh full rotation. This is paddock 11 here. So obviously we're starting down there on one, coming down through this way. Eight, eight is where the chicken tractor is, nine, 10, and 11. The strategy here this time of year is just to continue to put out hay uh, in these paddocks and um, you know put those nutrients down. So get those nutrients cycling uh, through the animals and uh, putting that down on pasture. Uh, in addition to, I like to continue to rotate this time of year because we got the mineral over there and we're re remineralizing, uh, pastures, uh, with that, with that mineral. Uh, just, uh, shout out here to, uh, a book called, uh, Nourishment by Fred Provenza. If you get the chance to, to pick up that book, uh, and give it a read, uh, it's a good one, but it's a further testament to the nutritional wisdom of not only uh, sheep and cattle but humans as well some very interesting data uh, in that book it's a pretty pretty uh, pretty lengthy read but but very interesting what we've done over here uh, we got about a half an inch of rain uh, yesterday last night and uh, <clears throat> I did open this up I took the wires off here of paddock uh, 11 and I have been letting them out uh, just to range a little bit in that windmill pasture. There's, uh, I don't know, five acres or so, six acres down in there. And, uh, you know, just, just giving them some room. But uh, for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm still haying up here on paddock 11 and trying to keep those nutrients uh, in the mix, uh, building, that, building that soil. Uh, I will say this, um, you know, I know a lot of us uh, in the regenerative camp are into bale grazing, and I've talked about this before. And again, this is our experience. There's a context here, always a context in agriculture, but our experience has been, if I get hay out here and it gets any thicker than that, uh, I just, I will not grow pasture that next year. Uh, I, don't, I don't know why that is, uh, but I just, I, I really prefer not to have thick layers of hay down. So I try and put out, put it out a little thinner and let them clean things up. I'm, I'm, to be honest, I'm more interested in the manure. What's up, big guy? I'm more interested in the manure, cycling that through them and having that down on pasture. As you can see here, I mean, look at all of it. Uh, but there's a balance here. You know, you don't, I don't want too much hay. Uh, I don't want them pugging uh, the pasture too much with the rains, you know. So, uh, you know, looking at the extended forecast, I'll tell you, uh, we're supposed to freeze up here uh, beginning of the week, I think tomorrow night we drop off. Uh, maybe two or three days we're, we're into the freezing temps at night. And I really, I have to drain our, our grazing, our water system here. That's a, more of a warm water system. But I tell you, I'm really thinking about after those three days, they're saying we're supposed to warm up again for maybe another four or five days. I'm really thinking about putting them back to paddock one and trying, trying an eighth rotation here. Uh, you know, it's El Nino. Uh, they're saying so uh, maybe a, a milder winter here it has been so far um, and so you know could we get that eighth rotation in and you know the big thing there is it's just about it's the labor of hauling hay right I mean we have to get the hay clear back there because we're not you know we're not we're not grazing uh, and and we do there is a price to pay here you know we have we have grazed this down uh, really close closer than I want it um, but the 
uh, payback or the, the, the flip side of that is look at all these pats. And I've talked again about when we hit spring, uh, every one of those on the underside will just be full of earthworms. And so bringing those nutrients out, nutrient cycling with the hay, nutrient cycling with the mineral, you know, remineralizing these pastures through that free choice mineral system. It's worked out for us. Uh, it's worked out so far. Um, I know some of you uh, just follow for the sheep and uh, I got some of you on our sheep uh, waiting list for breeding. We just had our, uh, put our, our rams in with the ewes here uh, mid-November <clears throat> and uh, that went really well. We, we split up uh, uh, rams, uh, put uh, one bloodline with a, a set of ewes and then the other ram with a, a, another set of ewes. And so we got those two bloodlines, pretty advantageous uh, for what we do here with the St. Croix sheep, but uh, all grass fed, uh, we are a, a St. Croix registered St. Croix uh, breeder. We, so we do sell uh, all grass fed breeding stock. Uh, probably, not probably, it's, it's, the, it's the best thing we've done here uh, on our farm uh, is to have and be raising uh, St. Croix sheep without a doubt. Uh, and so if you're on our waiting list, um, uh, it's all systems go uh, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, breeding uh, look to be successful. We split up rams and, and we color them. You can kind of, you can kind of see uh, some blue and some red. Uh, color those manes on the rams, and then we can tell when the ewes are bred. And uh, looks to be a, a successful season here, but we'll know for sure come uh, mid-April. Okay, let's talk overwintering cover crop mix here in our Johnson Sioux uh, seed trial, cover crop, crop trial that we've done here walking over uh, to the garden. I want to give you another shot of this and then we've taken some additional data uh, and it's it's pretty incredible what we're uh, discovering. I know, I know many of you are going to be interested to hear this. Let's take a look here. Okay, some of you that have been following along, Johnson Sioux extract, uh, you know, here's what we did. This section between the two white posts, so right from here over to here, and again, you can just about see that line down through there. That was, um, the, the seed was put down here and, the, and two and a half pounds of seed here, two and a half pounds of seed here. Uh, Johnson Sioux extract, 20 gallons was put down here. Straight water, 20 gallons was put down here, okay? So you've got this little, this trial here, and you guys know from the last video, we did just a measurement of the number of sprouts. So the number of sprouts, we had 145% more sprouts in the John, on the Johnson Sioux side. Now, we've taken some additional uh, measurements here. Again, on the extract, it was two pounds of compost, two pounds of compost mixed into 20 gallons of non-chlorinated water. And then we put that same non-chlorinated water down on the, uh, the, the, this side over here that did not get the extract it was the only difference. Two and a half pounds of seed, some spent hay over top of all of the seed. And, and you know, about six weeks later, that, that was beginning in November. So about six weeks later, here we are. Uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm so excited about this. Uh, we took a weight measurement today. So again, the, the first measurement, just a numerical sprout measure, just because everything was so, it was so small. I mean, I still don't know if you can, if you can see well, I mean, again, with the, just the regular eye here, you can definitely notice a difference in the extract side being taller and greener, but I just, you know, I, I wanted to quantify it basically. And we were able to do that today. We used a, we took seven random samples on the non-extract side, seven random samples on the extract side, and we ended up having to measure in, in grams, uh, 0.42 grams uh, on seven random samples here and over 2.4 grams over here. That It was a 588% increase uh, in biomass by weight on the Johnson Sioux side, which to me, uh, it's, it's, it's incredible. Blow me away. Uh, we didn't stop there though. I thought, you know what we should do? We should do a BRICS measurement. Let's get a BRICS measurement on the non Johnson Sioux side and a BRICS measurement on the, on the extract side. And we, we did just that. 
And on the non-extract side, we had a bricks measurement, just, just cutting off the tips, putting that through a garlic press uh, until you get a drop of liquid to put on that bricks meter, uh, the refractometer. And we had about a four, a four uh, on the bricks uh, level. Come over here to the, the extract side and we put that through uh, the, the same refractometer drop of, of liquid through the garlic press and we were at uh, right around a 14, a 14, a 14 on that, uh, on that extract side. So there are significant differences here. Again, according to Dr. Christine Jones, that's gonna go back to your photosynthetic activity, those BRICS levels. So we were over three times uh, the, the BRICS level in the extract side versus the non-extract side. That means we're photosynthesizing uh, at three times the rate on the extract side versus the non-extract side, you know? And, and I don't know, that just blows me away, right? Especially because we're, you know, we're a week away from, from winter solstice here, you know, and we're still seeing this kind of activity in, in cover crop. And, you know, I think about things like, I mean, our, our bioreactors are back there. You can see them. I mean, we're not we're not keeping these things from freezing. I had a friend go down to, to Acres USA, and uh, Dr. David Johnson was down there uh, presenting, and uh, he he sent me back some info sa uh, saying, you know, you really there's really quite a bit of emphasis now on hey, you really you really don't want to let these piles freeze because that's going to kind of you know hurt that biology, and then you kind of have to start over. And you know, we didn't we didn't pay attention to any of that last year. I had the, the pile there that we tore down and you know, it was out, it was out in the weather. And, and so I'm, I'm thinking, you know, what would happen, you know, if we actually followed the rules and, and, and did it right, you know, I mean, would we see an even greater, I don't know, five five point eight times the biomass though on the extract side versus non, I don't know how you really, improve upon that but but maybe so 14 on the bricks versus a, a, a four over three times the photosynthetic uh activity or rate i guess you could say according to dr christine jones why is that even important when we start to think about these two different camps you know we've got the we've got the chemistry side the npk but then you've got the biology side now that's really emerging in agriculture and that's that's what excites me but within that biology side you have plants taking carbon uh, and and putting that into liquid form and they're putting that out through the roots uh, in the form of root exudates. And those exudates are attracting microbes. And so as you increase photosynthetic rate, you know, you're going to increase those exudates. You're going to increase uh, microbial activity. And we know, we know now that your soil organic matters and building those up, that's actually primarily the result of biological activity and these microbial these microbes making that humus as a byproduct to this uh, this whole symbiotic relationship that's happening with plants, and so it's very significant that we see a uh, three times the, the the photosynthetic rate here on the extract side. Somebody made the comment. Uh, last video too saying that well there's something with temperature and I thought that was pretty fascinating they were bringing up the point that well the increased biological activity is actually going to increase soil temperature and that's why a lot of why you see the difference in growth uh, is you have a higher soil temperature I did take soil temperatures of both uh, both sections in there and they were identical but that doesn't mean you know I, I did not spend a whole lot of time uh, you know, charting that over over time here. And so, you know, take that into account as well. It, it still could be uh, there is a temperature difference there. In addition to all that, it, maybe we can say for sure, I can say for sure, I'm confident to say that there is something to this. There's something going on. I'm incredibly excited about this. The point here that I, I'm trying to get across is we need more people doing this, right? Sink your teeth into this. I was just driving through town uh, yesterday. It leaves all up and down the sides of the streets, right? We need to have more people experimenting with this and, and making these uh, bioreactors and, and extracts. And I mean, I can't believe, you know, these numbers, these numbers are from one application. You know, I have so many questions. Well, what about if we 
applied twice, you know, or what if we increased instead of two pounds of compost and 20 oz, what if we went to four pounds, you know, and mix that in? There's so many, there's so many questions, uh, so many unanswered questions at this point, and we need more people doing this and sharing results. I really still believe uh, that this is going to revolutionize, it's going to change uh, conventional agriculture. And again, you know, talking about the chemistry side. So are we saying here, am I saying that, that synthetic nitrogen doesn't do anything? It doesn't have any effect? That No, no, we're not saying any of that. When you apply synthetic nitrogen, you really see a lot of things disappear, like your mycorrhizal fungi networks, that kind of thing. And those extend the plant rhizosphere, uh, you know, and really allow plants to communicate with each other and share resources, those mycorrhizal networks. And we see those disappear with the application of synthetics. And so, you know, this, this extract here, they're saying the biology is equivalent to 140 pounds of nitrogen per acre, which is just, that's incredibly exciting. Uh, anyhow, thanks for hanging with me today. Uh, get your, get your piles built, get your leaves going and, uh, weigh in here. Let me know how it's going. Uh, take care and, uh, be blessed today. Be at peace.